Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about forces and motion. So we're going to start today by looking at a few scientific terms. The first one is distance, and distance is a measurement of how far apart objects are. If, for example, this was our house here, and we were travelling to our school here, then our distance would be the route we take, which is this length here, added with this length here. This is quite different to the term displacement. Displacement is talking about how far away you are from your original position. So in this case, we'd actually be looking at how far this point here is from the final point. So it's a direct measurement in the change of position. Now let's use these scientific terms of distance and displacement to understand scalar and vector quantities. Let's start by looking at a scalar quantity. Distance is an example of a scalar quantity. It has size but no direction. If, for example, we have travelled this distance here and here, which is 50 and 50, we know that our total distance would be 100 metres because we simply add them together. As you can see, we have size in the metres, but we do not have a direction. This is very different to a vector quantity. A vector quantity has both size and direction. So if we're looking back at our house and our school, we would have to use Pythagoras to solve for our unknown, which is the direct distance from our school to our home. In this case, it would be c squared equals b squared plus a squared. So if we use our measurements from before, it would be 50 squared plus 50 squared, which comes out to be 5,000. And then to determine c, we would have to do the square root of 5,000, which comes out to be 70 metres. So we are 70 metres from our original position. We have given the size, but we have not yet given the direction. If we consider the top of the page to be north, bottom of the page south, and then have east and west, we can see that we've gone in a southwest direction from our original position. So the displacement would be 70 metres southwest. So let's learn about the term speed. So what is speed? Speed is basically looking at how fast or how slow an object travels. Technically, we're looking at the rate at which distance changes and it is a scalar quantity, so it has magnitude or size. We can determine the speed of an object by using this formula. Average speed equals distance travelled divided by the time taken, or V equals D divided by T. So let's use this formula in an example. If you have been given the information that a car has driven a distance of 100 metres in a time of 5 seconds, then you can determine the speed by dividing the distance by the time. The speed in metres per second would be the distance of 100 metres divided by the time of 5 seconds, and this works out to be a speed of 20 metres per second. Sometimes we'll be working with metres per second and sometimes we'll be working with kilometres per hour. It is important that you are able to convert between the two. This is done by using the number 3.6. If you would like to convert a speed that is in kilometres per hour to metres per second, you simply need to divide the number by 3.6. Conversely, if you're going from metres per second to kilometres per hour, you simply need to times by 3.6. Let's use this in an example. If you have been given a speed of 16.7 metres per second and you would like to convert to kilometres per hour, you simply need to times this by 3.6. In this case, 16.7 times 3.6 comes out to be 60 kilometres per hour. So far, we have been discussing average speed. This is quite different to instantaneous speed. Your instantaneous speed can be found by looking at your speedometer. It is the speed that you are going at a particular moment in time. This is quite different to an average speed, which is worked out by looking at how far you've travelled over a complete time period. 
Next we're going to look at velocity. Velocity is the rate at which displacement changes. If you remember from the beginning, displacement is a vector quantity and therefore velocity is also a vector quantity. Therefore it has both magnitude and direction. That's all for today's lesson.